some fighters take off, but listen carefully as the Avril Lancaster takes off. Now we've heard a lot of E-12 engines today. And they sound just a little bit different this time, don't they, Danny? That Lancaster bomber, one of only two flying in the world today. This one comes to us from a Canadian four-plane carriage. Followed by the Mitchell bomber, the B-25. Twin-inch and twin-tail bomber. Oh, you look out here, Lancaster's B-25, Mustangs, Jugs, flying. It wouldn't take a lot of imagination to think about right over there in those beautiful trees to the south of us, some hedgerows. You could think that this just might be England back in World War II. We got P-38 storming overhead, that P-63 
particular design still is very effective. E38 Lightning by Lockheed. Now the airplane we've got coming up here is one of the unique fighters. It actually saw more service with the Russian Air Force on a lend lease program. That's her B-63, the King Cobra. A little bit different. Yes, still had the B-12 engine, but it was actually behind the pilot with a prop shaft going between his legs, up to where they also had a cannon mounted through the nose cone. Yeah, for that reason we gave it to the Russians. Is that the reason? Sitting on the drive shaft? Not for me, sir. <laughs> well, can I have one of those Mustangs or one of those Republics? Or one of those really, the reason we gave it to them is it didn't perform at high altitude where it could escort our bombers, but down low below 15,000 feet with all its heavy cans and all that, it was very effective on the eastern There's front. There's that plane around. It's made famous by Colonel Gabby Kobreski. The highest scoring ace of the B-47s. Great story. We were doing a air show in, in the Hamptons on Long Island several years ago. Southampton Airport. Renamed the Preston Field. He used to be the commander there years ago. Guess what? I turned around. There was a chance guy with a white crew coat. Sparkly. He was just jumping around. It was Gabby himself. In a blue jumpsuit. Just the life of the party. I finally met another hero that I wanted to meet. All right, let's go to the left now. Richard Fong and Tommy Thompson were the highest scoring and second highest scoring aces of World War II in the twin engine, twin tail P 38 Lightning. 40 kills each. How ironic. How ironic that Richard Fong came home and died in flight testing of the new jets. Wow. Went through all that. In a P-80 shooting star. As we see the King Cobra come off here, one of the unique experiences, it was never confirmed, but some of the fighter pilots flying P-51s and F-51s in Korea claim to have seen 63 Cobras being flown by Russian pilots. It was never confirmed. But after coming off straight from passes like this in Korea, there were several Mustang pilots who found yaks in front of them and successfully engaged and shot down the yaks, proving that mobile road capability even into the twilight combat life zone of the Mustang. 15,985 of the B-51s are said to have been constructed by the North American Rockwell History Club. 450,000 veterans here at Grafton B-47 built in three locations, Evansville, Indiana, Buffalo, New York, under license of Curtis Wright, and on Long Island in New York. 7 Thunderbolt didn't have that bubble canopy, and they said the T-Model had the, had the uh, bubble canopy, but there were razor back these as well. We did whatever we could to make pictures, and I was there. Whatever parts we had, get in the airplane, get in the air. Rich Gibson from Rockford, Illinois, which is the incredible viral, or RIP, really on the ground with the ground attack sequence of our fighters. Quite often when a fighter came home, perhaps not having been engaged in a dogfight, it would spend all of its armament trying to destroy enemy equipment on the way back to the familiar base. If you saw a train, go after it. If you saw a convoy, if a house looked like it could be camouflaging a fuel dump, go in and take a shot at it. Anything to cripple the enemy. Those pilots, especially after successfully escorting the bombers, were often clear, Danny, like you say, on targets of opportunity. Drop down low, go home, and anything that looks suspicious, put some blood in Now, like a lot of these, we were not a success. The B-51 had the design of the wings and the fuselage to get the job done. North American promised that, but it didn't have the engine. It had the American built Allison engine. And its performance was said to be in the history books lackluster. Of that. It couldn't get the altitude. It was relegated to a ground attack aircraft, hence the first designation, the A-36 Apache AV attack. Well, well into the war, when they finally made it the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, later produced by Packard, into the airplane, now they had the fighter that they wanted because of the last airflow engine, because of the streamlined fuselage and the other refinements, they were able to get up into the dogfight arena. And it was allowing, from the Allison engine, transition over to the full screen. Up from 25,000 feet up to 35,000 feet in the dogfight arena. And 
gave him another hundred knots of speed, up to 505 miles per hour. And not only that, he gave it the range to go on wind drop tanks and reduce the high with the B-17s and the B-24. You know, one of the unique missions here, rather than the 63 Peak Cobra took in after the war, was when they used it as an air air target. They would enforce the airplane, bomb the plane, fly around, let the students practice shooting at them in the ground. There's something definitely wrong with that. You know, interestingly, as we come 65 years later, Allison is now owned by Rolls-Royce. Oh, uh, everything changes. There's the familiar invasion strikes that allowed for Allied pilots to find out quickly whether he was around friendly pilots and friendly airplanes or the enemy. Those are very necessary in the invasion. There's the deep roar around the radio air-cooled engine. Another portion of the deep plot was considered vulnerable. It had a radiator like a car or truck, and the enemy knew that. The enemy knew if it blew out your radiator. If it put a hole in your radiator and it lost your cooling, the engine would see that you would be in the equivalent of a flying train. So that is not what that meant. The engine would see very quickly after that it would have been deleted. The ground radiator engine is air like your lawnmower engine may be. That could have actual jumps going off the engine and still get the pilot back home. You know, we're actually lucky just to be able to see four Mustangs flying together. I know this weekend they've got some bigger formations planned I can't wait to see. I think uh, yesterday's weather prevented all the pilots getting in and getting rigged up to safely fly some larger formations today. So everyone needs to make sure they get back out here on Saturday and Sunday to see the big masses P-51 formations last story together. The number of DMOM or B-51s is said to be in the history books well over 8,000 in number. Mostly definable by that canopy. The difference is the canopy, the first several had the greenhouse effect, and then after that they started to go that bubble canopy for several different reasons. And one was visibility, being able to turn around and look behind you and see that the bad guy was on your 6 o'clock position. You made a comment, uh, Danny, about the, the, the effect, and there's another particular effect that was created by part of the radiator system in the airplane that really was a, it was almost like jet propulsion in the, in the B-12. It is, and you've got the name for that. Well, they were able at the, uh, at the North American factory to be able to squeeze that exhaust air out of the radiator and cool it air and have it come out the rear, the exhaust gate, with thrust, and I think it amounted to about 200 pounds of thrust. Look at all the Meredith effect. Oh, boy. Here we go from the left, ladies and gentlemen, one of two remaining Lancaster bombers in the world. One, the Canadian warplane, Heritage, Heritage Museum, the other is in the United Kingdom. But here comes the length. Let's listen to this two-of-a-kind airplane. Seven thousand three hundred and sixty-six of these aircraft were built in various models of various, various Rolls-Royce, Harlan and Rolls-Royce packed vehicles in different horsepower. They were built by the Victory Works in Canada. People who put them off the assembly line. Essentially, it was the nighttime bombing range that the Lancaster accomplished, but not exclusively. There's the airplane coming to Jimmy Doodle and the Doodle Raid said to have changed the war in the Pacific. That bomber, that Pacific bomber was not before the war that many of the top line fighters that we had. You see, we were not prepared for World War II in the way of high technology. We had a job of catching up. But this blistering bomber, this B-25 Mitchell bomber really had some speed to it. As the war went on, they mounted a number of rockets and cannons on the nose. And after a medium range run, the B-25 Mitchell bomber would come back home and do ground attack with its massive bomb attack. Really do it. The damage could annihilate it with the right of the It was one of the most ever field-modified bombers in all of the... 
power, particularly in the Pacific Theater, where it was initially designed to do some medium bombing of a straight rebound bombing. It would be more suited in the Pacific Theater for use in the strafing and skip bombing role. 75 millimeter cannons, sometimes as many as 18 caliber machine guns. Oh, you, these sights are just so unbelievable. The Lancaster coming over the tree line. Sorry, Rob, it just caught my eye. That's a photo and an eye opportunity you just don't get a chance to see anymore. We thank the Canadians for sharing this. This had the big 21,923 pound bomb. A single bomb of that magnitude fit into that belly compartment or the bomb bay. Of course, in America, the B-17, the big famous bomber here, in addition to the B-24, but there's a lot of people who can argue that the Lancaster is actually maybe a better bombing platform than the B-17. I'm not going to believe that right here. There are numerous folks in different countries and continents who would argue. You know, uh, John, you bring up a good point. Those debates will go on for years, and I say it's time to get into the middle of them. Whatever you think the best fighter in the the World War II, we honor your opinion. But we could debate it over a pint or two for a while. There's the Bombay coming over. 10,000 built. Oh, no record yet. All right. You can feel the bad shape. We gave uh, 900 prize to the Royal Air Force. We gave over 9. We gave about 870 to the Russians for use on the Eastern Front. Low to your left, 1,700 horsepower. On April 18, 1942, Jimmy Doolittle took 16 of these type of aircraft off the very short deck of the USS After our splacking at Pearl Harbor, Doolittle took these airplanes on a suicide crash landing. saw the vulnerability that we put bombs in a major city. Half of the battleship stayed home to protect the shores, half went out into the Pacific, and the war had changed that day. Doolittle thought he would come home and be court-martialed. Far from it, he came home and got the Congressional Medal of Honor by the President himself. Oh <laughs> boy, those boys were great, just incredible fire. They're getting cooked to shake out there. I can feel it all the way up here on top of the stage. You know, the B-25, Rob started to talk about some of its ground attack, but it was also used to do a lot of anti-shaping and dropping uh, subsurface mines for submarines in the Pacific as well. A very versatile airplane. Of course, a lot of that action in Africa as well. Yeah, and, and early in its life, the early bombs were used in coastal patrol, and they actually were able to put a bomb right down the conning tower of one of those uh, one of those German submarines off the coast. And I'm not making fun of the pilot. Well, a veteran B-25 pilot, he has a hearing aid in both ears. Those engines, those pit engines are right out there at your ear level. Look going to the left. Streaking in in a high bank turn, just like on a ground attack run. Bomb bay door open. Look at the shiny fuselage. Any power support by a Members of the Commemorative Air Force, the Yankee Air Force, the Warbirds of America, and the Canadian Airplane Heritage. These are not government agencies. These are mom and pop who work in fundraising, who give dances, who give raffles. I love it, Danny. You're doing great. Go! All that. 22,000 pound bomb that knocked out a couple of strategic dams that the enemy had and also some of the bigger battleships we could direct it. Now that is a massive amount of bomb for two, but that's the airplane that we have to look. Early on, the engines were a bit unreliable due to bearings. Morning. You know what's not a competition right now? Thank you. 
25 miles an hour top speed out of the big point playing Mr. Bomber and come home perhaps with all four engines running. Of course, the many the Navy guys in the crowd that used to be looking for your ride. It goes out over the ocean. It's two or four inches down on the road. It's the same grass. It's 200 feet over the water. Of course, no way to the Navy was an athlete. If you look off the field of the map, you're making the corner. Check out the movie 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. Spencer Tracy was cast as Jim Coon and couldn't be closer. They were the same altitude of the both had 20 years. Stability there. Bob Poole, please meet your spouse behind the East Grandstand. Bob Poole, please meet your spouse behind the East Grandstand. There's a bunch of people in yellow uniforms on the other side of the runway. That's the award winning Rich Gibson and his team, known as Rich's Incredible Pyro, as we abbreviate that as RIV. They start working really early in the morning to do stuff like this. Well, before the sun comes up. Yep, they're yeah. starting about 4 or 5 o'clock. I specially bought plastic. There's one brand of garbage bag that will hold the gasoline and not deteriorate. You know, you look here and you see the bombers coming back in. Yes, a lot of the WASP flew fighters and, and other cargo aircraft, but the WASP pilots were also trained to transport all these Allied bombers across the pond. And actually, the, the B-29, when it was being produced and getting into its very early uh, combat roles, some of the male pilots were afraid to fly the airplane, didn't, weren't sure about its engines, which had a tendency to overheat, catch fire. Colonel Tibbetts, who later flew a Nola Gay, dropped from the first atomic bomb, went out and said, I'm going to train two WASP pilots to fly this airplane. On their check ride with the FAA, they lost two engines, and when they landed, the third one was on fire. The FAA administrator signed off their ticket. He took those two WASP pilots to the B-29 training school, and when the guys were afraid to fly it, he put them in the airplane, let them fly around, and the ladies flying this B-29, and they were a master of that airplane. It was a su totally successful campaign. He never had a problem with the guys not wanting to fly the B-29. Of course, we were able to do what we want to do. But ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, we're going to be bringing in those four P-51 Mustangs, and just two minutes from now, they are going to do a missing man formation. They'll be coming across from in front of us. One of the aircraft will pitch up and head west, leaving three. This is the kind of honor that is afforded to every pilot who is lost in combat or lost in training to this day from the time that it started many, many years ago. And when the time comes, I'm going to ask, ladies and gentlemen, that whatever you are doing, that you will stop, that you will stand, that you will remove your caps, that you will be silent.
in the show. That's what we call this portion now. We want you to stay and enjoy yourselves. The gates will be closing at 6 p.m. tonight. That's a long time from now. I would like to ask one question. Some of the P-51s set up and parked and the pilots set them up with their... Yeah, B-17. Gotta listen to that. With their propellers... 6 and 12, or 6 and, uh, I should say 6 and 12, 3 and 9. Others are setting them up on the 45s. I've got to figure out which one is right. What should the other one is necessary for 